My name is Taylor McCurdy and behind the camera today is Gat and we are here at Valgefonden Game Reserve where Wild Earth will be exploring the wilds for the next three months. Boasting spectacular views from the rocky ridges to open grasslands and dense bush felt. This place holds many secrets and that's what we're here to do to uncover some of the specials that sets Valgefonden apart from the rest of the reserves in South Africa. And of course this wouldn't be possible without our host Sadi Makweti and Ngobani Luxury Lodges. We're so excited to get going. Right now I'm staying up waiting for the sun to rise over the hills just behind me and illuminate fig tree plains which is all that you can see in the distance and I found a warthog burrow that seems to be quite active. So I hope we've made it here in time, but the goal this morning is to watch those animals emerge. So one of the reasons why a lot of animals will spend time in burrows is because of the lack of body hair. And that's the case with the warthogs. So they'll utilize uh, burrows that are dug by aardvarks, porcupines, hyenas will dig them out too. And then they'll go in where it's nice and cozy. And as soon as you drop down below the surface of the earth, their temperature stays a lot more consistent. So that's what we were patiently waiting for now. And the warthogs seem to all still be tucked up inside. And now we're just waiting for a little bit of dust to signal us that they're starting to wake up. Also keep an eye out, there's a small bird called a familiar chat that's been associating around uh, the warthog burrows here and I'm not quite certain as to what the relationship entails but I suppose we're going to find out over time. I think I can hear something. There they are. I honestly thought that it would be a slow eruption from the burrows, but it seems as though the warthogs are not taking any chances this morning. And uh, as my main focus was on that little familiar chat we were watching it flittering around the burrow, the next minute I just sort of started to see this dust come out, which is one of the things that we look for where we are, well, wanting to know if there's anything inside a burrow. And the dust sort of started developing and the next minute they just shot out. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so it was quite a brief sighting. It was still spectacular. And then they darted off into the open plains where I'm sure they'll be a lot happier now to enjoy the morning sun. Well, that was a fabulous start to the morning. Um, on we go. We're gonna head to a different area now. Uh, and well, I'm hoping to find some rhinos. There's no shortage of rhinos on Valkafonden. Uh, but we've got quite a distance to drive. There's over 500 kilometers of road network within 36,000 hectares. Uh, so we've got a lot of exploring to do. Uh, we're pretty much getting up before the sun has even risen, uh, just to make sure that we can cover as much ground as possible. There's always lots of clues out in the bush and that's of course how we find animals. Uh, something you're going to realize about Valkafonden is the amount of rhinos that are in this area is honestly just exceptional. So we've come across some dung and uh, there's lots of it around here, but let's quickly have a look. Is it white rhino dung or is it black rhino dung? Now, if we start to pull back at some of it, I don't want to pull too much of it. I'll use this little loose piece here. It's quite dark in color. And if I open it up, you can pretty much just see grass. There's just lots and lots of grass. There are some denser bits there, but uh, that's just from the, the coarser grass material, um, more like the stem. Um, so yeah, white rhinos. I'd like to see a little rhino calf this morning. So that's actually gonna be one of our focuses is that I'm gonna try and find you one of those, or maybe more than one. No rhinos just yet, but I found one of my favorite animals. A jackal. And what we're looking at at the moment is a black-backed jackal. Oh wow, this is an epic behavior. So we were just looking at the white rhino dung. This jackal is now utilizing that same dung 
and I'm just hoping to find maybe some insects. Oh no, where's the binoculars? Oh, it's got a leg. Let's scrape that out of the dung though. Okay, well that's, the that, uh, white runners definitely don't eat impala legs or whatever antelope that might be. Oh, isn't that amazing? Blackback jackal carrying its breakfast. Yes, if you can just stay there and eat it nicely for us. Well, this is pretty special. I can't believe this jackal's actually just sat down right in front of us. Normally my luck, something will pick something up and run off behind the vegetation. So that was great. And also in the nice morning light. So we know that jackals are very much opportunistic and they, they love to scavenge, but we need to give them credit. They're really good at hunting too. So I'm just scanning. I think we might end up bumping into this rhino quite close. It was kind of just somewhere in this tree line over here. So I'm just going extra slow. The last thing I want to do is startle the rhino, of course. I feel like I'm going too slowly now. <laughs> By the time I get there, oh no, here it is. And it's the one, it's got a baby. There's a tiny baby rhino, oh my goodness. Okay, they're just moving through the tree line. Oh my, wow. This is unbelievable. Wow. Hello, girl. So, well, I'm sure you've noticed by now, the rhinos at Valkavund, and they still have their horns on them, which is a real privilege to see. I mean, I can't really tell you the last time that I saw rhinos with horns on, especially in the big eco open ecosystems. Uh, they're really focusing on horn trimming. That's also a term that we really need to start using. It's not dehorning. They're not removing the entire horn when they practice this conservation effort to protect the rhinos, but rather trimming the horn. So we're trying, well, myself and I think a lot of conservationists are trying very hard to, to change that term. She's just coming out into the open now. There's also a starling that's following her around, her and the youngster, catching all the little insects that she's kicking up. But that calf is tiny. I'm gonna guess now, but once I start to get the ID kits of the rhinos, I'll have some more information to kind of go from. But I would say that that calf is maybe just over a month old. And there's a starling on the back of the rhino. Do you see that hat? That's cool. We normally see ox peckers on the backs of animals. Um, I've actually spoken about this before. Um, I, I think I mentioned it from a long time ago when I was uh, guiding in the Eastern Cape. Uh, where the ox peckers unfortunately w almost became locally extinct but they're bringing the populations back now and I'd find that the the cape starling would almost fulfill the role to a degree of the ox pecker so how I was sort of mainly seeing them interact with wildlife was with giraffe and they would fly up behind the giraffe and those big engorged exposed ticks uh, they would kind of flutter nearby and then grab one and then eat them and then I also see them sitting on the backs of course not doing the same motion that an ox pecker does they'll do that scissoring motion through uh, the coats of the animals and, and then try and remove the tick larvae and any other parasites that might be on them wow okay we need to reposition so we can get a better view immobilizer first though this is going to take some getting used to oh no how do you see it okay the little rhino is having a scratch on the stick <laughs> I think it wants to fight with it now. And it moved quite a bit, so it got a fright. Oh, there we go. That's the spot. Having a proper scratch around the eyes. But I mean, this little one is so small, it can fit right underneath mom's belly. That's why I was saying, I, I can't imagine that it's much older than a month. But it has also been a long time since I've seen a rhino this small. This is so special. 
what an incredible morning. Wasn't it great to finally meet Half Moon's calf? I'm looking forward to spending more time with the rhinos of Valkefonden, and there's no shortage of them. But it's time for myself and Claire to head back and tuck into some breakfast. And a big thank you, of course, to our hosts, Sadiba, Makweti, and Ungabani. We'll see you out there again.